I'm here at Woodlands, the north of Singapore. Behind me is Johor, another country in Malaysia. So later on, we'll be taking the Johor Causeway to drive across the border. Because in this video, we're going to take a five hour drive or 355 kilometers all the way up from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur. Tesla is officially launching in Malaysia this week. And according to some sources, the Model Y has already received more than 10,000 orders, which is amazing. So in this video, we just want to showcase to you how easy it is to make a road trip on a Tesla. We will be taking a Tesla Model 3 SR Plus, the white Tesla behind us, on this journey. That car has a WLTP range of 448 kilometers. The SR Plus has now been replaced by the rear wheel drive. So this journey will take on average of five hours, but it also depends on the immigration traffic conditions, which we cannot control. So this trip, this car is a, it's a nice sedan, four road trips. I'm not here alone. Today, joining me on this trip, I actually have my friend Tim, who is our driver. So Tim, thank you so much for joining us on this trip today. Hey guys. How many times have you made this trip? Um, at least five times, yeah, to multiple places, Genting being one of them. Yeah. So not a newbie to driving across the border. As we make this trip, I need to store my backpack. The good thing EVs is that there's more storage space. So the front of the Tesla has storage space. Tim has opened it using the Tesla app remotely and I'm able to fit it in. So I'm going to put my bag in. You can see right now there's actually a lot of different things inside. Shoes, my other bag. So as I place this backpack in, Tim is going to show us the correct way to close the Tesla front. So there you go with the two hands. We're now going to head inside the car and we're just going to show you what we're going to do to start off this trip. So uh, inside Tim's Model 3, for this trip, we are going to use a setting, a celebration setting called Chill Mode, which is different from Standard Mode, to see if there's actually any real world range difference between both. So subscribe to this channel to find out when we come back from KL using Normal Mode, what the difference in range is. So Tim is just going to show us where to change the celebration mode on the Tesla touchscreen. Under pedals and steering. All right. So over here, you see the acceleration, chill and standard. We are going to use chill for this drive. And when you tap into the power or the state of charge 84%, which we are at right now, tapping it again just changes your range display. So us in Singapore, we have LTE in our Tesla. So you can see the LTE logo over here. However, it does not work for us in Malaysia yet. So when you are driving the KL, how do you navigate him? Well, I have this, this device here. So this is like a MiFi device. So basically, it's just a wireless router that connects to like a local, that has a local SIM card in Malaysia and just uses the network there. So yeah. So that's a great device to use. If you don't have a device like that, another tip that many Tesla owners in Singapore do is they just navigate here in Singapore first. It will save the route even when you lose data access crossing the border to Malaysia. So let's do that as Tim demonstrates it and let's head over to the immigration. So after looking through Plug Share, we've decided to go to Shell at Tanka. What made you pick that location, Tim? Um, I mean, I think generally speaking, I'm trying to find somewhere like right in the middle between Singapore and uh, KL, where, wherever we are going in KL. And so that's sort of roughly in between. Um, yeah, and it's a shell. Also, I think they have some amenities there. Like I think they have Costa Coffee there, you know, uh, probably toilet as well. So I think it's probably a, not a bad spot for, for, for you know, for, for stopping by. Oops. I agree. How do we add a stop on a Tesla? Okay, so you can edit your trip and all you have to do is just add like uh, add another location. So I'm going to be searching for this uh, location, Shell, HPC, HPC, Dunkirk, and South Mount as well. Yeah. So that's where we are looking for and it's this one here. So it's 160 kilometers away. So now you basically, 
I find it a bit strange because I, I think when you add a stop, it should be before your final destination. So currently the way the software works is that it adds it after your current destination. So what we always have to do now is just to drag it to sort of shift the location. So it goes to this one first before we go to the next one. So yeah. What Tim did, he typed the whole name for the place. Another faster way you can do is just type the postal code. In this case, 84900 you also get the same location. Now there's one current limitation for Singapore Tesla's going to Malaysia. As you can see, it still shows, shows you charging needed to reach destination. Yeah, let, let me try uh, um, editing it and clicking done again. So you can see here. See, yeah. So it does not recognize the sort of, uh, that this is a, the first stop is a charging spot. That's right. So the map is showing that we'll reach Shell Tangkang at 31% state of charge. It doesn't yet recognize in Malaysia that that is a charger that we will actually top up to 80%. So it's showing that we'll reach KL at minus 19%, which is not the reality. So don't be afraid or don't be surprised if you are driving to Malaysia before the official roaming, the premium connectivity is launched, that it shows that you'll be fine. And because we've done this trip before, there's a bit more reassurance. Okay, let's hit it. So as you can see, we are approaching Woodlands checkpoint. We're making a right turn. Now, the checkpoint wait times can be very unpredictable. On good days, it could be as easy as less than half an hour. For some of our friends on public holidays on weekends, it can be as crazy as more than six hours. Tim, do you have any tips for us who are planning across this border to try to avoid the major jams? Tips? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a tip. Take a flight. <laughs> That's good practical advice. Today actually looks pretty decent. Fingers crossed. Now, this is one of the busiest land crossings in the world. You can see the checkpoint building coming up from the Singapore side ahead of us. Every day, close to 300,000 people are crossing this land border. So recently, the Johor Chief Minister has said that they're committing to reducing the wait times by hiring up to 350 additional staff to man the immigration counters by the end of September. So hopefully that clears things up and make our cross-border trips a lot more enjoyable. You can see there's a traffic build up ahead of us right now already. I want to take this as an opportunity to ask, there's a lot of people who've never tried EV before, they are worried if I get stuck in traffic, will I lose my battery, my state of charge very quickly? What is your experience, Tim? Um, I mean, it does not really lose much in terms of the percentage. Of course, it just basically means uh, it does use battery for the uh, air conditioning uh, for the most part. That's, that's I think, the, what takes up the most energy as we are sort of slowly moving. Um, yeah, but to me, it's not been an issue at all. Uh, yeah, no worries, because usually when I get to this checkpoint, I'm normally quite high in terms of my uh, charge state. Uh, and if if needed, after the checkpoint, there is actually uh, another charger quite nearby in Johor, which makes it a lot easier to, you know, uh, at least less anxiety to know that on the other side, if it's low, if the, for example, if the traffic was that bad and we only arrive in Johor at, at say 20% or something like that, we could charge on the other side uh, relatively easily. For well, most of our friends who drive EVs, they notice on average we are stuck per hour of traffic jam around 3, maybe 4% state of charge. Many of them say it's actually more efficient than most ICE cars. Another good way to be data driven is that Tesla has a lot of data. There's an energy app you can see in the touchscreen. And in this energy app, you can see like how much energy consumption is going from driving, your aircon, the way you condition your battery. So battery conditioning, right? So the thesis behind chill mode is it actually doesn't need to keep your battery so warm because normal mode or sports mode, they keep your battery warm so that you can use for peak performance when you need very rapid acceleration. Right now, in the chill mode driving, the car's acceleration is more controlled. 
is there a big difference for you, Tim, so far between chill uh, and normal acceleration? I mean, not really, because first of all, I tend to be the sort of driver that does not like, a, does not like, a, not a heavy footed driver. So I tend to accelerate quite smoothly, like simply because I, that's sort of how I, I like to drive. And so therefore, it's not really uh, an issue for me either, either way because I, I tend not to like, use the acceleration as much as most people. We'll put this to the test and see how it goes. Right now, chill mode to go to KL and then normal mode to come back to Singapore. Oh, recent news. Singapore Passport is now the world's most powerful passport. Easiest visa-free travel to most countries around the world. So great passport to have. And we'll see you on the other side of immigration. We just left the Singapore border. Now we're going to cross Johor Customs to enter Malaysia. This has been very smooth so far. Better than average? Yeah, this is like super better than average. It feels like there's like a completely no jam, uh, but hopefully. So now we're entering the Malaysian side of immigration, the building right ahead of us. So this is amazing. So far, no one asks us to open the front here. So see you on the other side. We just crossed immigration. That was the fastest we've ever crossed immigration, yeah, as you saw in the bureau. That was like 10 minutes, 10-15 <laughs> minutes. Is that a record for you, Tim? Yeah, that's probably quite quick. It's crazy. We didn't even have to, how to say, uh, do the checks to open up the, the, the front and the trunk. So yeah, really quick. Good feng shui today for Tesla Malaysia launch. So here on the Malaysian highways already, usually when you would turn on autopilot, Tim? I mean, I suppose I could turn it on now. Uh, I mean, I could turn it on now. Let's see how it works. The lanes are not very clear, as in the lines are not even there for some parts. So let's try turning it on and see what happens. So I suppose it still kind of works. So with the two blue lines that you see over here, and with the blue steering wheel, that means autopilot is live but it is not perfect technology. The driver is always in control. Anything can happen anytime, be ready to take over. What's your tactic to stay on standby when autopilot's on, Tim? Like, is your foot on the accelerator, the brake, or the ground? Um, I don't know. Currently, it's on the accelerator um, because it's the most comfortable position for me. Um, but if it gets a bit hairy, I might keep it on the on the brake side of things. But generally speaking, I just keep it on accelerator. Because also for, for, for me, sometimes I don't like, what I don't like is the phantom braking. So I might want to actually shift to, to uh, straight away to like a normal drive, which means I tap the brake and then accelerator, accelerate them right away. So, you know, so hopefully it doesn't like cause any like people to back into, back into me at the back. Uh, safety is paramount. You can see there's a motorcyclist ahead of us and a car is tracking it too. You can see in the screen, it tracks the motorcyclist. In Singapore and Malaysia, we do not recommend doing autopilot hands-free. Keep your hands on the wheel at all times. Now, now let's talk about what are the limitations for autopilot in Singapore and Malaysia? One of the limitations is uh, is that what it does it only keeps to the lane, to a single lane that you choose. It does not like uh, make any sort of turnings for you, uh, like FSD. So basically, if you want to change lane, you actually have to uh, tap on the stock to sort of turn left or right. Uh, but that being said, when when you're an autopilot and you do that you are actually asking it to change lane as well. 
so it will change lanes uh, as it is an autopilot so I mean but it's a manual process of actually having to tap on, on that stock that ability to change lane on autopilot is that free or you must pay for enhanced autopilot I think no, there could be an enhanced autopilot feature actually yeah maybe because I'm so used to it that I can't really tell the difference right now because it's all the same part of the same feature so yeah I mean every country has a slightly different one like in US when you drive also because of regulation so if you have enhanced autopilot or full self-driving if you tap the turn signal like left or right the car will just turn for you yeah I mean I tend to prefer to just manually do the turn because I feel like it's a lot faster and safer because one of the limitations of the of the lane switching is that in Singapore and Malaysia there is a six second uh, time limit to to doing the maneuver within if it exceeds the six seconds the car will basically like jerk back to its original lane which is I feel quite dangerous and so normally when it comes to changing lanes I would prefer to just manually take over and just switch and then reactivate autopilot thanks for sharing your experience tim so let us know down in the comments like how's your personal experience using tesla autopilot in malaysia and singapore again autopilot is free the purpose of autopilot is to use the eight cameras surrounding the tesla to give you a safer drive and also a more relaxing drive so at the end of a long road trip you feel that you have more energy to enjoy your destination so actually what you notice here that just happened, we've got a large vehicle on our left. With autopilot, the car sticks dead center on the lane. When Tim and I were driving FSD Beta in California, it would keep more clearance on the side of the lane to give us more margin of safety between us and a big car. If we look at the trip planner, we will reach our charging stop at 5.08 p.m. at 29% state of charge, as you can see in the screen. So we're gonna enjoy some music, enjoy the road trip. See you when you reach our charger. We're crossing a toll booth, and one potential limitation about autopilot in Malaysia and Singapore is that it may not work so well or pause by itself with toll booths yet. We are about two hours into our drive. Our state of charge is actually relatively low. It's at 15%, as you can see in the touchscreen. Over here. And originally our plan was to go to the Shell charger. However, it's on the southbound other side of the highway and that requires a almost 20 minute detour. So what we're doing now is we are about 10 km of six minutes away from the northbound Ayakuro r r where there's a TNB Electron DC fast charger, 80 kilowatts, two stalls there. So that's going to be our focus for charging on this trip. The Tesla map does not have the TNB Electron location, maybe because it's a new charging station. So we're relying on Plug Share app, which is a very important companion, and Google Maps or ways to navigate us there. So as you can see in my phone right now, we should be there in about eight more kilometers. Nervous, right, Kanchong? For those of us who are riding EV for the first time, we don't dare go below 20% state of charge. But for people who drove a lot, the comfort level increases. How do you feel, Tim? What's your lowest state of charge ever? I think I've gone like 2%, 1%. Because I actually saw a YouTube video before. Somebody actually tested how far it would go after 0%. So what he did was he drove around his neighborhood and he actually went pretty far, I think another 30 kilometers before it actually really goes flat. The trailer in front of us is carrying what Malaysians call the king of the road in Malaysia, the Proda Myvis. So we're here at Ayakukuro, this is our stop. So now what we need to do is to find a TNB Electron charging station. Two stalls. Okay, we see it. The TNB Electron is actually right ahead of us. By the main road over there, past the public bathroom. 
So we found it, TNB Electron is actually just before the Petrona station. For those of you driving on this route, going up to KL, come check it out. Tim, is this your first time using TNB Electron? Yeah, for sure. I hope it works. <laughs> so that's the thing, right? Every time we use a new charging platform, we may need to use a new app. So one of the great advantage of having a supercharger network in Malaysia in the coming weeks is that it's one app for all countries. You don't have to download a separate thing for Thailand, for Malaysia, for Singapore. And this is a charging store. Two stores or one? Two stores. Okay, we made it. So this is Tim's first time charging here. My first time experiencing it. So you're going to see for like a fresh users how we actually download the app, book, charge, and use this place. Okay, I think we need to check out the instructions, I suppose. You got to scan the QR code and download the PNB Electron app. Now, after Tim does that, he's got to top up his prepaid wallet. That's step two. He's got to reserve his slot on the map and the duration of charge, that's step three. And then he's got to char start charging. That's step four. So four steps to get this working. So as Tim sets up, these are what the two DC chargers look like. These are two both up to, as you can see here, up to 90 kilowatts. I don't think the cable is long enough. So I probably... Tim will need to reverse park because this cable over here, it won't be able to reach the Tesla's charge port all the way down there. Let me try as, as Tim pops it up. Yeah, that's the max limit, so definitely not. This is as far as it goes. So for Tesla's using TNB Electron, reverse park. If you've got a front EV charger, you can front park like this MG. I have to go through a registration process, you know, the whole sending the SMS and all that. So as Tim does that, let me just give you a short tour of our environment, what we have in this r, &R. So there are wall shrooms conveniently located right behind us. And if you need some coffee after a long road trip, there's a Starbucks down here. Further down, there's Petronas. You can also just pump up the your tire pressure. And there's also a convenience store, a Mersua convenience store in the Petronas behind us. Okay, very soon for a moment of truth. Reach now? Ah. Yeah. Okay. Success. Let's see the app. Cable connection check in. This may take some time. Okay. You see, hear the sound of that? Starting up. Okay, looks like it's charging. Yeah, so the, the car is charging. We're at 14% state of charge. We have up to 90 kilowatts of charging speed. Let's see how long it takes us to charge up to what's the target charge state looking at. Maybe about 80-90%, so probably about half an hour, yeah, something like that. Okay, so half an hour, we'll do a short toilet break, maybe have some coffee from Starbucks, walk a little bit, and we'll see you back here as we continue the journey. So, going through this experience, it's our first time using the TNB Electron, how's it been for you? I mean, it's better than some of the other chargers I used to uh, encounter in KL, because in KL, there are different kind of chargers. Some chargers, you need to bring your own cable. But luckily, this one, we don't really, we don't need. So the only issue was downloading the app, registering for it, topping up your credits, you know, uh, something like that. So after that, it seems pretty smooth in the sense that 
we got it going in about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's not too bad. There's two bays here. Hopefully in the future, we'll see larger EV charging stations. A great move by TNB for giving us more charges. And it is more convenient in the Shell location for now. So hopefully Shell opens another station as well in the northbound route. Okay, we'll see you after a break as we, the humans, also supercharge. We're here for about half an hour, having some nice refreshing drinks at Starbucks. And Tim, will you show us how do we check the state of charge okay, uh, on your Tesla app? Well, you can basically look at the, oh, sorry, the Tesla app. So currently it says charging stop because for some reason, the charger just decided to stop halfway. I mean, not halfway, but at least it was about 90% charge. So I uh, guess it's fine. So this is the app that says completed, even though it wasn't 100%. But anyways, it's good enough for us. Uh, at this point in time. How frequently does something like this happen? Because I've not heard it happening on a supercharger before. Yeah, I think it happens. It happens on occasion. Like I think there was one charger, slow, slower charger, that SP charger somewhere that did the same thing. But I have no idea what's the issue. Could be a software thing or, you know, I, I have no idea actually what's the actual problem. So let us know if you had encountered any situations like this before where your car stops charging before your charge limit or before your time is up, whichever came first. So when a car is charging for EV owners, you don't have to sit inside the car. We can watch Netflix if we want to. But in Tim's case, you got a chance to do a little bit of work. You got to stretch, a toilet break, and now we're going to unplug the car and head off to KL. So as we are unplugging the charge port, you can see that we now have a BMW iX next to us. I got a chance to test drive this car two months ago in Singapore. It's a great car, it's probably very similar to a Model X from a Tesla world. And of course, it's got the iconic grill down here, the BMW kidneys. So as Tim and Plugs, the good thing about Tesla charge port is that it closes by itself automatically within a few seconds. Okay, so about one and one and a half hours to our destination and we'll arrive with about 50 percent so we have more than enough charge so not bad at all 7 42 pm about 126 kilometers to go that was autopilot slowing down the car as you can see the two blue lines with the blue steering wheel autopilot driving through curves through the rain see a van coming ahead of us. Tim, how's your experience with autopilot in the rain so far? Uh, so far for this sort of rain, um, it actually works pretty well. It's only when we get the rains where you can't really see even like, like 20 meters ahead, then it's a bit worrying. But then sometimes it feels like it works for the most part. It's just that personally I feel afraid <laughs> because I can't see myself. So I would rather take over and slow down a bit. But like, for example, now it works perfectly fine. No issues. For Tesla's computer, when it's very heavy rains and the cameras are very occluded, there will be a prompt in touchscreen saying like the autopilot capability is temporary unavailable. Just so that the humans are aware to take over. But right now, as we make this van, everything is happening smoothly. The car is able to see all the other cars around us. And some drivers even feel that actually sometimes it's safer to be on autopilot because the eight cameras, the car's responses are much faster. Tesla has stats showing when you drive with autopilot, the incident rate for accidents are much lower than manual human driving. And even if you drive manual human driving on the Tesla, it's a lot less accidents compared to driving any other brand of cars. You can see the rain is picking up right now. We are about 44 kilometers away from our destination in KL, another 45 minutes to go. We'll see you when we're much closer to KL. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. We made it. It's about five hours plus driving up here. We could definitely make it in less time. So we're about 10 kilometers, about 13 minutes away from our final destination, which is 
yummy dinner. I'm gonna eat wonton noodles and rice. So as we reach that location, we'll do a final check-in, do a wrap-up, look at our charge stats from the energy app and get Tim's view on how this road trip was, driving on chill mode. For a rainy day, at rush hour traffic, this is not bad for KL. In 200 meters, turn left onto Jane SS22 Street 40. So we're here at our destination. We're going to eat in a hawker store in SS2 next to the Atria shopping mall. So it's been quite a ride. So here we are, Jalan SS22 stroke 19. This is our final stop. It is almost exactly five hours from Singapore to KL. You can see the time here, 7.33 p.m. We are now at 45% state of charge after one charging stop. I believe when we did the TNB electron charge, we were at 14% state of charge. We charged all the way up to 88%. That's our GoPro saying shutting down just in time. <laughs> Tim, how was today's drive to KL? It's uh, relatively smooth. I mean, a bit of a rain, but it didn't really cause any uh, issues. I mean, of course, there was a slight issue trying to find the charger in between. I guess we didn't. It's, it's our fault because we didn't really plan it that well. But uh, real world issues, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah, and chill mode actually is quite interesting because I noticed it is really slow in acceleration. As in, because sometimes I'm used to um, trying to uh, get up to speed as quickly as I can, but on chill mode, it actually takes like a bit of more time to get up to speed. Um, but yeah, other than that, generally speaking, it's uh, been a been a you know okay trip, I guess. Like no no problems here. Yeah, I enjoyed the ride too as a passenger on the Model Three. It's pretty comfortable. It rides lower than the Model Y, which I enjoy. I like SUVs more. However, I think this is pretty decent because it's not the performance version or like a Model S Plaid where you ride even lower. No problems for this trip. Now, moment the truth. Let's check the energy app and see whether chill mode actually makes it more efficient. Okay, so you can see our energy consumption over here. And if we want to look at our trip stats, we can see over here and we can also just see on I think the main screen and we go to trips. How was this for our current trip 152 watt hours per km? How does it compare with your average drive? Actually, personally, I don't even look at that. So I would, would have no idea what my ener average energy consumption is. So. You tell me, Derek. <laughs> so I think this is a good benchmark. I think everyone drives differently. It also depends on your average driving speed as well. If you floor the accelerator, of course, the consumption will be much higher. If you're driving at like 90 km per hour the whole way, then your batteries are going to last much longer. So just take a look at this. And this would be a good comparison point when we drive back from KL to Singapore in our next video. So here are the stats. You can see the stats in the current trip. Last charge was when we were in Ayukaro. And you can see our total trip distance. I think this one would be your total driving right? mm. trip, so about yes. 26 km. So this trip definitely use more energy consumption. But again, we are driving at yeah. a higher speed as but well. This is also averaging over like a very like like over two years almost. So yeah, it's a very long time. So this is just a trip. Plus, I think maybe of the rain and all that. So it's been a good trip. We're looking forward to dinner. We've got family, uh, Tim's family here, so we're gonna have dinner right now. So if you found this video useful, please click the like button. Let us know if you have any questions about driving a Tesla across the border. You've seen we did it with just one charge. In fact, I think right now we had 45% state of charge. So if we didn't wait that long, if we just charged for 15 minutes, we probably got up to, let's say, 60% yeah. state of charge. We would have yeah, reached here at maybe 20%. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem at all. It's probably my fault because I need to do a bit of work while at Starbucks. So it added a bit more time. For those of you who are attending Tesla Malaysia's official launch in Pavilion KL, looking forward to see you there. And if you want to find out where we drive back in normal mode, what's the real world range difference and efficiency difference, click the subscribe button.